Hi, freshman class. This is Mr. Pickett, and I wanted to have an online tutorial to make sure that everyone understands how to make charts and how everybody understands how to build some graphs and also to review some velocity, displacement, and acceleration information. So what I have up right now is uh, my Google Drive, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a, a new document on here. I'm going to add a Google Sheet. And this looks a, lo a lot like the Microsoft Excel program, which is what we're looking for. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a column. One column will be time, and the other column will be displacement. And I'm going to start very quickly here, very easily. Um, I'm just going to do a very simple graph, very simple data, basically showing some object that takes five seconds to travel and every second that it moves it moves another another two meters basically in order to create a chart in Google Sheets you're gonna select the two columns that you're using and then you're gonna go to insert we're gonna go to chart and usually it's defaults you with a, a bar graph but what we specifically want is this type of a scatter plot and what we'll notice is that our displacement is on our y-axis and our time value is on our x-axis. It titles it for us, and so we have a nice graph right here. Um, a couple things that I know about this graph. Number one, it shows a linear relationship, which basically means that it, it follows in a straight line. You guys can see from down here to up here, it's really straight. Number two, more specifically, the type of relationship it is showing is a direct relationship. It's saying as time gets bigger from left to right, that the displacement value also gets bigger from bottom to top. Um, so both, both variables are going up. Now, um, from this graph, we can keep going. We can actually build other, other graphs in this thing as well. And what I want to create is a... A graph about velocity. It's kind of what I want to get to eventually. In order to calculate velocity, velocity's equation, if you guys remember, is my change in displacement divided by my change in time. So how far divided by how long. So what I need to do to these two columns is I actually have to say, all right, from, from here to here, how much time occurred, and then also from here to here, how much, how much uh, uh, distance did I cover? So I'm going to create two new columns, change in time, and change in displacement. And I'm going to create a formula. I'm going to hit equals, because I want to take this minus this. That represents the change in time from 0 to 1 second. And that will give me 1. And I'm going to copy that data down all the way through. And so this, if I double click on it, shows me that it's taking this value minus this value. And to show they're all one. My change in displacements equation is going to look the same th way. It's going to be equals to set up a formula. And this minus this. And then it's two. And again, if I look at my equation for velocity, it's this and basically column divided by this column. So my velocity is this divided by this. And we're going to notice that the velocity is always 2, so it's constant, which is what we see here. This is a linear line. This is showing constant slope. And all of us know that a, the slope of a velocity, excuse me, of a displacement versus time graph is equal to velocity. So we've kind of proved that here. And so what I want to eventually do is I want to create a velocity versus time graph. And how I do that is I take velocity, but I also have to have specific time values that are associated with it. And this gets a little tricky. Um, as, as an example, from here to here, when we calculate the slope, the slope is up to and over one so the slope is two and if I was going to pick a specific time that it's moving to for 
um, I notice that it's moving two meters per second between zero and one seconds. And so the best time value to use here is the in-between time. And so for this slope of two, I'm going to actually write down a time value of half of a second. So I'm going to write that down. I'm going to do time, and that would be for velocity. And for this one, it would be 0.5 seconds. And then for this next one, it would be 1.5. And this next one would be 2.5, and then so on and so forth. So we get to 4.5. So if I want to graph this data, I'll select it. I'll go to Insert, Chart, change it again to a scatter plot. Now, I have an issue with this graph. The issue with this graph is that it, the first column that it selects is always going to be on the x-axis. And I want time to actually be on the x-axis. If you look over here, you notice that the x-axis is velocity. So I want to change that. I'll click those three dots, I'll hit edit. And I'm actually going to make sure that for the x-axis we have time. I'll hit OK. And then I'll make sure for the y-axis, which they call series here, I'll select velocity. I'll hit OK. So that looks slightly different. And what we notice is that on, again, this column, excuse me, not this column, this, uh, this y-axis that represents velocity. And then over here, my x-axis rep represents time. And we notice that the velocity is constantly 2. All right, awesome. Kind of the last thing that we'll talk about here is uh, um, something that we haven't really touched on a ton in class, but it's this idea about acceleration. I'll write that word right here, acceleration. Acceleration is defined mathematically as the change in velocity divided by the amount of time it took to change that velocity. So the change in time again. And uh, if I was looking at this data that I have, we'll notice that the velocity, because this right here is representing the velocity versus time graph, the velocity never changes. And so if I have zero change in velocity, zero divided by anything is going to be zero. So with the data that I have here, what's happening is I, I have some object that is moving with a constant velocity, so its speed is not changing, which means as well that it has no, I'll write that down, has no acceleration because there is no change in velocity. If I manipulate my data slightly, and I, I hope that I can do that pretty easily, um, if I change my uh, displacement, and I'm just going to kind of keep on uh, doubling my displacement, I guess. Uh, so it goes from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32. So that changes some information here. Um, but what we notice is that my graph takes a completely different shape. My displacement versus time graph shows that a slope that's increasing. And if the slope is getting bigger, that also means that my, and I'll come back down here, if my slope is equal to velocity and my slope is getting bigger, that means that my velocity is getting bigger. And if I come over to my velocity versus time graph, it's the same thing that we notice. We notice that the velocity starts out low and then it keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And so this new thing that I've introduced today, acceleration, if I have a change in velocity, then in this case, I have acceleration. That's where I'm going to leave you at. Hopefully this made sense and it was easier for you guys to follow along.